Today, I'm gonna give you some tips, some secrets, if you sell anything that's considered high ticket, like the high ticket coaching, consulting industry that could be hundreds of different type of companies or different training programs. And I'm gonna give you some very unique things that you might not be aware of. First of all, go down to the bottom of this video, hit the subscribe button, that's probably important for you. Hit the subscribe button and to the right of that, or maybe the left, I don't know, somewhere in there, there's like a little bell. That's your notifications button. Hit the notifications button as well so you get notified by YouTube every time I post a new training video, which I typically do two to four times a week. Now, the first thing that we have to understand when you're selling in the high ticket space, products that are anywhere from the low end of, let's say, 2K all the way uh, you know, to maybe 30 to you know, 50 to even 100K, I would say the average ticket is probably about 10 to let's say 20K, somewhere in that range. You really have to, to build a gap. Now, what do I mean by building a gap? I mean, you have to help the prospect find out what their real situation is. We call that their current state. They don't really understand what their problems are. Now, maybe they know they have a problem, Let's say if you're selling like an Amazon offer that teaches them how to, you know, start an Amazon, you know, business, they want to make more money, but they don't really understand the depth of that problem. Okay. They don't understand the consequences of what happens if they don't do anything about solving the problem. So your job is to help them see what their real situation is. And you can't do that by simply telling them what their real situation is. That's going to go in one ear out the other. You're biased. You're the salesperson. Your question ability allows them to tell themselves that where they internalize it. So you have to learn how to build a gap from where they are, current state, to where they want to be. Now we call that their objective state. What is the end result they want? Going back to the Amazon thing, they probably want to make more money. They probably want to have more time, all right? So what does their future look like once all the newfound problems are solved? So here's their current state. You build the gap. These are their newfound problems they might not have realized they had. And then we have to get them to see what their future, their objective state looks like once the newfound problems are solved. Those three things, helping them see what their current situation is, current state, building a gap, all the newfound problems, and then getting them to see what the future looks like once the problems are solved with your solution, then everybody buys, okay? If we can't do one of those three things or we can't really do any of those very good, that's why you're getting a ton of objections. Now, I'm gonna show you a few examples on how to do this. One good way that you can help build urgency in the sale is asking what are called consequence questions. Now, that's called an N. EPQ consequence question. Now, if you've never seen any of our videos, if you're not one of our clients in our virtual training platforms, maybe you've never seen one of our reels on Facebook or IG or anywhere, NEPQ stands for Neuro Emotional Persuasion Questioning. It's how to get the prospect to pull you in and sell themselves rather than you having to push and pressure, which as you know, very rarely works with most of your prospects. So consequence questions help you build urgency in that prospect's mind that they need to change their situation now, not keep pushing it down the road, okay? We're not telling them that, because like, as you know, that goes in one ear out the other. Our questions allow them to tell themselves that. Now, what is the goal of consequence questions? We're getting them to feel what the consequences are if they don't do anything about changing their situation, where they internalize the consequences, they internalize, they feel what's gonna happen if they stay in the status quo and their problems stay the same and nothing changes, all right? So let me show you how to do this. I'm gonna give you a few generic versions of consequence questions. And then I picked about, I think three or four different high ticket um, coaching, I would say, uh, you know, products or services like different niches to show you how it works. And then whatever niche you're in, you can literally plug into that formula, right? So generic version would be this. Well, John, what? What happens if nothing changes? Now, I'm gonna say that in a concerned tone. Why would I use a concerned tone? Because that's how the prospect interprets why I'm even asking the question. What's behind the question, all right? Or what are the consequences if you don't do anything about this? Or this one. What are the ramifications if your situation stays the same though? See, I'm concerned for them. I'm using a concerned tone, okay? If they come back and they say, well, I don't know, I'd have to figure something out. And you say, well, are you, are you willing to settle for that? In a concerned tone, okay? Now look, generic versions here, you can actually even use this with what you sell. 
You'd want to make it more specific though. Let me show you how to do that, all right? Let's say if you sold in the real estate education uh, industry. So you sell some type of different training programs that teach people either how to get out of their nine to five job and start becoming a real estate investor so they can make passive income. Or let's say some of your prospects already have a real estate business, but maybe they're only buying two, three properties a year and they're coming to you because they want to start learning how to buy 10 properties every month. And without the right skill sets that your training offers, there's no way they can do that, right? So here's a consequence question, all right? Let's say that in that conversation you've had with them, they've told you that they're losing a lot of deals because they don't have access to capital. So whatever problems, their main problems they've told you in that conversation from your questioning, you're gonna customize the consequence question to that because it makes them feel like you actually understand their unique situation. You don't wanna make that cookie cutter or generic. Okay, but what happens if you, now I want you to pay attention to my tone because with consequence questions, you're gonna start off with a skeptical tone to raise their emotions, and then you're gonna end that with more of a concern tone. So I want you to pay attention to my tone and how it shifts here. Okay, but what happens if you don't do anything about this? You keep losing these good deals because you don't have access to capital. Like, what happens at that point? Concern tone, Look, pay attention. What happens if you don't do anything about this? See, that's skeptical, challenging. Okay, but on the flip side, what happens if you don't do anything about this? You keep losing these good deals because you simply don't have access to capital. Like what, what happens to your business at that point? Concern tone, all right? Or let's say if they're a nine to five person, okay, they're still in a job for this industry. Pay attention to my tone. Okay, but on the flip side, what happens if you don't do anything about this? You just stay in the same job, same income, another three, five, even 10 years from now. Like what, what happens to you at that point? Lowering my voice into that concern tone. See what I did there? Okay, now let's say if they come back and they say, well, I don't know, I guess I'll just have to figure something out because that could happen. Well, do you want to have to go through all that if you if you didn't have to, concerned tone. Now, nobody's gonna say, yes, I'd love to go through all that. They'll be like, no, if I didn't have to, okay? Because I'm using a, I mean, do you, look at my hand. You can even put your hand on your chest, especially if they can see you. I mean, do you, do you want to have to go through all that if you, if you didn't have to? See, even when you use your hand there, if they can visually see you on Zoom, okay, it's gonna, they're going to interpret that, that you're more concerned for them rather than me going like this. Okay? I can use my hand here. Do you want to have to go through all that if you, I mean, if you, if you didn't have to? And they're interpreted that you're actually concerned for them, which is probably a good thing for you if you're in sales. You want them to trust you, right? Okay, let's say if you sold like you know, fitness or weight loss coaching programs. That's part of the high ticket space as well. We train thousands in this space here. And let's say that the prospect has been using all these different diets, but say they're 90 pounds overweight. Let's just, I'm throwing that in here. Okay. But on the flip side, what if you don't do anything about this? You stay on these diets that like you mentioned, haven't worked and you keep gaining weight. How would you lose weight at that point? See, concern tone. Now, if they come back and say, well, I don't know, I just have to figure something out. You can also use this. Well, are you, are you willing to settle for that? Well, no, I mean, well, if I had to, I, I, you know, I don't know what, well, if I had to, I would. You can say, well, whose choice is it if you settle or not? Or whose choice is it if you don't lose the weight, right? See, concern tone. Okay, here's another version of that. Let's say in this example, they, they're on the call with you or on Zoom with you because they, they say they're 135 pounds overweight. They're in their late 40s and they feel like if they don't start losing this weight, they might not be around 10 years from that point to walk his two daughters down the aisle at their wedding, right? Because if they're way overweight, could cause strokes, heart attacks, as you know, right? Big problems. Okay, but on the flip side, John, what if you don't do anything about this? You don't lose 135 pounds. How would you be able to live long enough to walk both of your daughters down the aisle? Concern tone. How would you at that point be able to live long enough to be around to walk them down the aisle? Concern tone, okay? That causes the prospect to feel 
like you understand their situation, that you actually care about them, okay? That causes emotional attachment with you. Probably a good thing for you as a salesperson to get your prospect to feel like they can trust you, right? How about if you sell dating coaching? Like if you, you're a coach that helps men find the woman of his dreams, or maybe he wants to go on a bunch of different dates, but he has a hard time talking to women at social scenes, something like that. Okay, but on the flip side, Josh, what if you don't do anything about this? You don't learn what to say and ask when you meet women socially that you want to date. What, what are the consequences for you at that point? What if you don't do anything about this? You don't learn what to say and ask when you meet these women that you're really wanting to date. How will you ever be able to get married? Concerned tone, okay? Okay, or you can simply, sometimes you can lean in and just be vague like this. What if you don't do anything about this? Concerned tone. See, I can do that as well, all right? Let me give you another example here. Let's say if you sell like marriage or relationship coaching, okay, and their problems are they're fighting, they don't feel connected, there's tension in the home with the kids, like all this kind of stuff. Their marriage is on the brink of destruction. Okay, but Sally, on the flip side, what happens to your marriage if you don't learn the necessary skill sets to stop the arguments, all the tension in the home, and both of you keep feeling disconnected? What would happen then? See? Concern tone. All right? I start off skeptical. I want to raise their emotion, their emotional state, and I'm going to end with the concern tone. Your tone helps control how the prospect reacts to you because they're interpreting what you're saying, the words you're saying, and what you're asking. They're interpreting your intention behind that by how your tone comes across. Okay, but on the flip side, what happens to your marriage, Cindy, if you don't learn the necessary skill sets to stop the arguments and then the tension in the home and both you and your husband keep feeling disconnected? What would happen then? Okay, concern tone. All right? All right. Hope those tips helped you. If you sell in the high ticket coaching space, I could actually show you about 12,000 other things and tips that you're gonna need to understand if you wanna start making 20 grand a month in that industry or 30 or 40 or 50, even 60, 80,000 plus per month in your industry. We are already training hundreds, if not thousands of people in your space who are making that amount of money every single month when they first came to us we're barely getting by. So if you want to acquire those skills, make sure you join our free Facebook group. We'll show you a little bit more in there. And then if you want to book with one of our account managers to get into our advanced training programs that are industry specific as well, just reach out to us in the Facebook group and we will see if we can help you. Hope that helped you today. Now, if you're wanting to learn how to sell more of your products and services than you are now, join our free Facebook group. Go to www.salesrevolution.pro. We should have a link on here somewhere, salesrevolution.pro. Right when you join the salesrevolution.pro Facebook group, because we've got thousands of entrepreneurs in there, thousands of salespeople like you, thousands of coaches, consultants, executives in there that want to sell more. Right when you join, check your DMs because we're going to message you. Some of my team is going to message you a free training called the NEPQ 101 mini course. It's going to give you a list of different questions and phrases you can use in any sales situation. That alone is going to help you sell more than what you're doing now. And we go live in the Facebook group about three to four times a week with different subject matter trainings, different Q&As, different client interviews that will also help you sell more. Join the Facebook group salesrevolution.pro. See you there.